In today's video, I will demonstrate how I used one light to create a beautiful wraparound light and show you how I used that one light and one modifier to create this image. So hi everyone, this is Jiggy, a portrait and wedding photographer from the Philippines and welcome to the channel and also welcome to my small home studio. For you guys who are not familiar with the channel, this is a relatively small shooting area that we will be using today. It is only 2 meters wide and about 4 meters deep. But in a way, we are just pushing this backwards, but we're going to technically use just about 3.5 meters. But on the safe side, this shooting area is about 2 meters wide and 4 meters deep. Now, this video is once again an extremely detailed video, and I will show you how I set up the light and the purpose of each light, and at the same time, even give you the exact measurements on the light position. So let's start off with this one. What light will I use? I will use my Sony F60RM. This is a battery operated speed light, but of course you can use any light at your disposal so long as you get to understand the techniques or the principles that I will be demonstrating today. Now for me to mount the Sony speed light on this light stand that I have right here, I will need a flash holder. And the flash holder that I decided to use for today is this one. This is the MagMod MagShoe. So with the MagMod MagShoe, all I need to do is put this multi-user interface of the Sony flash system, or basically your hot shoe, into this female cold shoe. And when I put it here, I can lock it in place and lock this one in place. Now this MagMod MagShoe is perfect because when I mount it on my light stand like so, with this pistol grip, when I depress it, it's very easy for me to fit, fix the angle of my light. However, the downside of this MagMod MagShoe is that it works only with MagMod products and modifiers. However, it does have a light a mount here, or a, sorry, an umbrella mount right here, which will be the modifier that I will be using today. So, oh, by the way, one last thing. Whenever I use flash units like this, it's essential that I pull down this uh, diffuser in front because what this one does is it spreads the light even more, which allows you to maximize the size of your modifier. Now, the modifier that I want to use, or with the modifier that I will be using, is this one. This is my Fotix 120CM reflective umbrella. You know, to be honest, a lot of you guys tend to stay away from modifiers like this for reasons that really baffles me. I really don't know, because I really love these modifiers because number one, it's very portable, and they're huge, and, and best of all, they are inexpensive. So we're using the silver side right now. But what I'm going to do is that the silver side usually adds a lot of specularity, which I don't want in this particular shoot. I want it to be as soft as possible. I don't have the white version because a white reflective, a white reflective umbrella would be better. It'll give softer light but I can always just diffuse the light even more with this one. This is a diffuser for umbrellas like this. By, again, this is a 120cm umbrella. And all you have to do is just like a softbox, put it over the umbrella so that you get a nice diffused light. So as I said, this MagMod MagShoe can actually serve as, or this MagMod MagShoe serves as an umbrella holder. So I will put it like this. Now, my general rule is, Whenever you are mounting a light on the umbrella, where the flash ends is where your umbrella should begin, so that the moment your flash fires, it will just spread the light evenly up to the very edge, especially that I have the front diffuser on. And then, let's put it this way, put this one over, lock it in place, and there you go. That's the modifier that we're gonna be using for today. However, I also want to talk about this, this backdrop right here. This is a white seamless paper from Savage. How, you don't really need it. Actually, if I had a white wall here, I'd be happier just using a white wall because there are no creases. The white is just pure white. And for me personally, most rooms, or if you have a home studio, I'll just paint one wall white and I'll use that as a modifier or a backdrop the entire time because I will show you guys later, just by controlling the spell of your light, you can make this white backdrop backdrop turn gray. Now, aside from this modifier that we'll be using, I also have another modifier that I want. Well, consider it as another light source, but it's not really a light source. And it will be mounted on this one. This is the Manfrotto Adjustant Lamp. 
However, you could use any clamp that you have. Um, basically, they're cheaper ones that you can find for about $5 that just mounts on your light stand. And it's got a tilting bracket and a, and a clamp like this. Now, the clamp is here primarily to hold onto this one. This is my 30 by 40 cm foam board. And I use this very often as a reflector because, well, I just like using it. So there, that's gonna be my two lights for today. But technically, I will just be using one light, which is my flash system right here. So now that we have all the equipment we will need for the flash, for the lighting aspect, let's talk about the camera that I will be using. So the camera that I'll be using is my Sony A7 Mark IV with a 50 millimeter 1.2 GM lens. Now the reason why I'm using my 1.2 GM lens is because I want to shoot a half body shot, but I won't be shooting at 1.2, in which case I actually am shooting at 5.6 with my shutter speed at 1 over 250, my ISO at 100. Now I usually give all my settings whenever I do this instructional videos, but I have gotten requests and they've been asking me why my settings are like this or why my flash settings are like that too. And I will create another video after this. So if you guys want to watch this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And while you're at it, click that notification bell. And by the way, if you want to see more of my images, you can also follow me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. So I have my settings once again at 1 over 250, f5.6, ISO 100. I will set my white balance now at 5600 Kelvin because that is the white balance of my flash unit. Now my flash unit is triggered remotely using this one. This is a Sony WRC-1M remote commander. And as you can see, you could basically see everything that my camera is seeing. That's because of this one, I am recording everything using my Atomos Ninja V. And this is just a monitoring camera so my subject can see he or she while I am shooting. Now my actual exposure is actually this, it's pitch black. So everything that you will be seeing will be coming or every light that you will be seeing from here on end will be coming from my flash. Now to properly demonstrate this lighting setup, I think it's time for me to call in my wife Coco, who will be my subject for today. Come on in, babe. Hi, babe. Hey. Of course, you look fantastic. You know what, let me get this out of the way. Let us just put this one somewhere here. And let's start playing around first with this particular flash. Now with this flash, I want it to be as close as possible to her to get the best light possible, the softest light possible. And if you notice, I have her towards the edge of the light. The reason why I have her towards the edge of the light is because the hot spot, even though we are maximizing the light, the most powerful light will still be in the center. And if that is the one that's hitting her face, it's, it just throws everything out of whack. I want the softest light possible, which is the one that is basically feathered towards her. So let's bring up this light right now and let's tilt it somewhat, not even 40 degrees. I just want a bit of direction of light. Now the light right now is flat towards her. What I want to do is I want to, wait, I want to twist it a little so that the light will wrap around because the whole point of this exercise is to create beautiful wraparound light. But this might not be enough, but we'll do it. We'll do it uh, step by step so you guys can see the difference. So this one now, this feathered light is also somewhat going to hit the backdrop. But since the light is so close to my subject's face, the fall off will be so great because of the inverse square law. In other words, if I expose for her face, the light that's hitting the backdrop is about one or two stops under already, which will then turn that, that backdrop, that white backdrop, gray. So enough talking and more shooting, right, babe? <laughs> okay, I'm sorry about that. Okay, so let's compose it this way first. Okay, can you move slightly here? Too much, go back. All right, perfect. So my flash setting is at 1 8th power. So the power of this flash set is at 1 8th. And let's just take one test shot first. See, this one really helps a lot. You notice you can actually check the way she looks like already using that monitor, okay? Oops, you know what happened? I didn't turn on the flash. So it's important that you have to turn on the flash that you're using there. Let me turn it on now. Okay, so with my flash on at one, again, at one eighth power, that is the light. Now you see already, that we were getting beautiful light on my subject's face or co-host's face. Let's do one more, babe. Can you go in a bit closer to the light? 
okay, then don't shy away from the light and look at me. There, I just wanna show them something. With this particular image that you are seeing now, there's a lot of contrast. Why? Because there is a principle also that the closer the light is to your subject, the softer it is, but the closer the light is to your subject, the more contrast you have. So how then do you make the light wrap around? Because you want the shadows in her face because the shadows is the one that gives shape and form. So that's where this particular modifier comes in now, or this particular light, or this particular reflector, whatever you want to call it. Now normally, what photographers would do is they would have it right here smack at the side of the subject to remove the shadows there. So let's take one more shot. And there you go. So you basically removed all the shadows. However, I feel that you removed too much of that. So what they would they say is that, okay, let's bring it away from the subject to create more contrast. Okay, one more. And that holds through. However, one thing that I love doing when we talk about wraparound light is we want the light to wrap around. So instead of having the light right there, or sorry, this reflector right here, opening up the shadows in your subject's face, you capture the light that's going here outside her. So you bring it back from here. Let me, let me remove this one first. So what we're going to do is we're gonna get this light and reflect it back from this direction. Because by reflecting it back from this direction, you're not getting wraparound light. So let's do this. Let's just put it here and let's see the difference. All right, babe, fantastic. There we go. The light just looks more natural. So let's show the one. This one is when the light was on the side and this is the light coming from the front, just wrapping around. Of course, it also works the same way. If I move it away, then I will get less bounce and a bit more shadow. And that's fantastic, sorry. And I think I'm very happy with that. Beautiful. Now let's fix our composition. You guys might be wondering and saying, oh, the composition's so off. Well, because I'm thinking of shooting this for Instagram, so it's gonna be four by five, so I'm gonna be cropping a lot of things, but I think I'm still a little bit too high or maybe I'll just tilt it down. Because remember, compositionally, or for height, camera height, whenever you're shooting a half body portrait, it's always best to have it at chest level of your subject, all right? Beautiful. Now that we have this in place, it's about time we bring out my measuring tape so you guys can actually replicate this in your small home studio. Okay, so let's start off with this one. How far is Coco away from the white background? She is about 70 inches from the, from the background to her back. The light edge is about 68 inches. Center of light to the background is 88 inches. How far is Coco away from the camera? The camera is four feet away from Coco. Now here's a critical one. How far is she from the, from the light? She is only 16 inches away from the light. And this light again is a 120 cm light. The center of the light is about a foot away from Coco. So that's the one that's going through here. This backdrop or this reflector is 46 inches away from the center of the light. And from here to the edge of the light, it's only 22 inches. So that's, what else did we miss out anything? No, okay, so with that, let's just start shooting. You look fantastic, but you know what? I think I wanna straighten this out just a little bit more. There, perfect. Beautiful, oh, sorry. Now you can profile here, good. But I actually like it when you're, um, well, you're profiling there, but looking towards me too. Okay. So tilt your head this way, yeah. Beautiful, I love that. Beautiful wraparound light. You look fantastic, babe. Beautiful soft light, and to think this modifier is so inexpensive, it costs probably less than $100, but don't worry, I'll put the links in the description below. Let's do a few more, I just, I'm so in love with it. Okay, 
beautiful. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And just to recap, thank you very much again, babe. Okay, so what we did was we got a relatively big modifier, which is 120 cm, really close to my subject. Having this light, having this light this close to my subject will create beautiful soft light. However, with beautiful soft light like this, it's very close, you're gonna create a lot of contrast. In order for you to remove the contrast or control the contrast, you need another light source like this, with, in this case, I just used a reflector. But the key here to get that wraparound light is not having the reflector coming from here, but rather from the same general direction of your main light, which is this, and just wraps around your face. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please do like the video, subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell. Now, if you want to see more of my images, you could always find me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. Okay, till the next video.